also during that time in your master's, you created a robotic painter. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a generative painting robot. So it would figure out how to uh, execute a painting with brush strokes, and it would do it in simulation. So it was a machine learning algorithm that like figured out how to do this in simulation. And then it, right? Exactly, a genetic algorithm. And then it executed those brush strokes onto a physical canvas. And the lab that I was working in, so this was early days, I think relatively early days of like machine learning. I mean, not early, early days, but before obviously a couple of waves of ma machine learning research. Mm -hmm. And the hypothesis of the lab was that uh, machines and machine learning would be good at creative problem solving. And so we were looking at a bunch of different design spaces, like, you know, bridges and structures and mechanical uh, design and seeing how machine learning and evolutionary algorithms could solve these sort of problems creatively in ways that humans couldn't. And my particular project was figuring out, like, whether machines could be creative from that perspective. And it was like, you know, there was not a lot of research in this space at the time. Um, so, and I will say what we did was incredibly naive compared to like Dali and all these systems that have come out recently. But it's cool to see that some of that turned out to be right, at least that um, generative art and generative image creation turns out to be an incredible use case for machine learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will include in the show notes a link to your website that has videos of this arm painting using your genetic algorithm. Do you want to fill us in just a little bit for the audience on what genetic algorithms are and how they work? Yeah, so genetic algorithms, the way they work is they take an encoding of a solution and they encode that into a genotype. And so you can imagine brush strokes represented as some sort of like bits. And then they execute that painting, you start with a population of random paintings. And those random paintings look nothing like your target. But you take the ones that look the most like your target, and then you mm. sort of cross them over, and you mix them together, sort of like uh, reproduction. You breed the algorithms together. Exactly. Well, you breed the solutions, the possible solutions together, and then you mutate them. So you it's inspired by uh, evolution, uh, by biological evolution, obviously. And you get with each sequential generation, you get uh, things that are a little bit look a little bit more like your your target. And so you have an objective function, and you're grading your entire population. I think I was looking at a thousand paintings or something like that, and they were all competing to try to be the best painting. And over many generations, hundreds and hundreds of generations, you saw something that looked like your target image uh, emerge out of the solutions. So presumably all of that training, all of these generations of genetic algorithms being interbred and the mutations happening, that presumably all happens in simulation. Exactly. So then, it's impractical. There were some projects where we actually did live learning, um, like on real robots, but it's sort of impractical with paintings where you're like wasting canvases. So the idea is you create a simulation first you evolve it in simulation and you try to match your simulation to reality as much as possible. And then you execute in, so you can imagine it, the, it's sort of like imagination, right? Was one of the, the metaphors that we use that, you know, it, the robot has a self-representation. It can imagine these solutions and then executes them. 